All right, everyone, welcome to Strictly Sports. I'm Jacob Brown. Today, joined with CJ Yuri. we're going to do our 2020 NBA Western Conference playoff preview. Now, we understand that this, you know, anything could happen with this NBA playoff bracket. You know, will the league come back? We don't know. Will they even play the playoffs? We don't know. We're assuming, though, that if they do come back, that it would just be the teams that are in the one through eight seeds right now, meaning the Portland Trailblazers, the New Orleans Pelicans, the Sacramento Kings, all tied for – essentially, they're all tied for the ninth seed uh, at the same record. They would miss the playoffs. San Antonio Spurs as well. Uh, they're about four games out of the playoffs. They would miss the playoffs. So we're really just going to talk about the one through eight seeds here, talk about how they match up. At the end of the pod, we'll talk about who's going to win the West and who's going to face the Milwaukee Bucks, who CJ and I both agreed would make the NBA Finals out of the East on our Eastern Conference podcast, which we posted up to all of our platforms on Monday. So welcome, CJ. How are you feeling, man? I am feeling good. Uh, you know, I've just got some, it's getting to that point of the semester, how uh, teachers, some, I feel like teachers get together in a, uh, in a meeting and say, you know, how, how are we going to stack all of our assignments and homeworks to be done uh, on the same week? And it happens literally every semester. I'm a senior now, it's four years, but what I've done about 10 to 12 semesters worth of homework. And I swear every single time, every assignment is due the same week. So um, I'm a little swamped with work, but I'm excited that we get to talk about some sports and the NBA West. And, you know, other than that, I just miss sports. I feel fine. I feel healthy. I'm sleeping well. So, you know, just doing my best to get by. Yeah, man. Uh, same with me here. I had to write three essays in three days last week. It's like, you know, everything's always bunched up into like one week and it's, it's so annoying to go through, especially now we got to do college at home. So that, that's uh, definitely thrown a wrinkle into thing. Are you doing that, uh, that pass fail option? You're going to take that. I know that a lot of people have been doing that. I'd like to think that at the end of the semester, um, my grades are going to be good. So I'm not going to have to even worry about that. Um, I might have one class that I might need to exercise the option on um, just because it was a class that definitely was not designed to be online, but is now online because of everything. And it's pretty tough to do. But other than that, I'm not going to really need to use it. And I don't really want to use it. So um, I'm, I'm just fine. Yeah, man, it takes away from that GPA. Hopefully we don't got to use it. But let's get into these NBA playoff matchups here. Let's start with the 1v8, the Los Angeles Lakers and LeBron James versus the number eight seed Memphis Grizzlies. The Grizzlies were 32 and 33, so that's one game under 500. At home, they were 18 and 15, 14 and 18 on the road. The Los Angeles Lakers, oof, they were 49 and 14, 33, excuse me, uh, 9 and 2 in division, 23 at 8 at home, 26 and 6 on the road. So it really doesn't matter where the Lakers play, they're the same team. CJ, you look at this this 1v8 matchup, if it happens, you have a young team in Memphis, no expectations coming into the season. You had all these teams stacked up in the West. People are saying, oh, you know, the Spurs are going to get in, the Dallas, Portland, that's who's going to get that 7-8 seed. And now, come April, we're talking about the Memphis Grizzlies here. What's your take on them? So, I, I actually really like what Memphis is doing with their organization. Um they they made a, in my opinion, a pretty good trade earlier in the year, sending out Andre Iguodala, Jay Crowder. Um, Solomon Hill, I believe. Solomon Hill, and they got in return. Um, Who did they get in return again? They got Justice Winslow, I thought, right? Yeah, it was Justice Winslow. I think that was it. Yeah, Justice Winslow, which is it's weird because ESPN doesn't have him on their um, – stat sheet or maybe it's because he hasn't played yet anyway um i like what they did i think john morant in my opinion should get rookie of the year regardless of all the zion hype for the (laughs) six weeks that he played um so the way i see the series is is it should be a 4-0 sweep i you know a young team in memphis is not going to really um steal any game it's not going to steal a single game in la no way um they might have a home game where it comes down to the last two minutes of, of basketball, but you know that's LeBron time, and then they'll, the Lakers will end up pulling away. But I think the Memphis Grizzlies, what happens in this series, uh, if it were to start tomorrow, is you will see the building blocks of a very competitive young team that is ready to 
make their mark on the league in the next few years. And they're going to show uh, NBA veterans and guys that are coming out of uh, contracts into free agency that, hey, you can come here and, and build something with these young guys. Um, we might not have won any games against L.A., but if you look at those those games. I mean, we were, you know, one or two veterans away from really being there and, and maybe winning a game or two. So um, I think it's going to be 4-0 sweep, but I really hope that in this series I get to see John ja Morant blossom into – and, and show the, the the league and the world what he can do in the playoffs and, and start to build a playoff resume. So that that's what I'd be looking for. Um, what about you? I'm with you 100%. I mean, I don't know if you'd agree with this, but I almost think of the Grizzlies as Heat West. Uh, they have a lot of young players. They also have some vets to mix in with it. Uh, I just think that since they're in the West, which is generally known as a deeper conference, they're pushed down to the eighth seed. Also, you know, the Heat have that superstar value with Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, whereas John Morant is probably the most talented player on the Grizzlies, which kind of limits that. He's a great player, but they don't have that second player to go along with him or that bona fide already, you know, superstar with a track record. I, I look at the Grizzlies as the Grizz- the Heat West. Are you with me there? What was your question again? I think the Grizzlies are very Heat West. I mean, would you say that's accurate? Like the Miami Heat? Yeah. Um, I think you got young players, vets to mix in. I, mean, I, I could see, be wrong. Here's where I disagree. Um, the young players on the Grizzlies are much younger than the young players on the Heat in terms of like experience. So when you look at Bam Adebayo, yeah, Bam Adebayo is young, but this is his third or fourth year in the league, third season in the league. He's an all-star. Um, I think the Heat are much further along. I mean, if you, if you can even just look at the record in general, but um, I, I don't, I don't know if I would say that. I would say it's more of a, I don't even know, like a Pacers. I would okay. say they're, they're trying to follow more of a tra- trajectory of the Pacers and Celtics, which is build through your younger guys. Um, yeah, you know, the Celtics may have taken uh, or, or got Kyrie Irving, that experiment failed, but a lot of their capitals in their younger guys that they've had, like Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, uh, uh, the list goes on there. Um, and then the Pacers, who who are a few guys off. I actually, I just, the reason why I say I don't see it being, you know, the Grizzlies are the Heat of the West is because the Heat, the, the Heat have a go-to star. They have a superstar and they have another star that is going to become a superstar in Bam Adebayo, but I, I just like what the Grizzlies are building in general. And I honestly think in a series against the Lakers that there will be a game or two where, you know, in the fourth quarter, LeBron James is going to have to go, you know, g- you know, be pushed a little bit just because the Grizzlies can score the ball. So that that's I agree I mean. with you. I mean, you know, and, and in terms of the Lakers as a whole, I mean, we've talked about the Grizzlies now. The Lakers are, you know, it's either them or the Clippers, in my opinion, coming out of the West. And it's either the Lakers, Clippers or Bucks is the best team in the NBA. And this Laker team is complete. I think they're, you know, they, they, the only thing that they lack at is guard presence and shooting ability. Uh, that's the one thing that they lack severely, I would say. You look at the point guard position, it's a mix of Caruso, Cook, Avery Bradley, um, Dion Waiters now, of course, uh, Rajon Rondo. So these are not the most, you know, star studded guys at the point guard position. They needed a big shooter, maybe like a Derrick Rose type. They couldn't swing a trade at the trade deadline. And I look at them and I say, other than that shooting ability, they're big. They they defend. They have that superstar quality value. I love this Lakers team. I agree with you. I think it would be a sweep easy over these Memphis Grizzlies. So now let's move to this 2v7 matchup, which would be between the other L.A. team, the L.A. Clippers. They were 44-20, and 25-7 and at home. 19 and 13 on the road. And then you look at the number 17, Dallas Mavericks, 40 and 27. They were 19 and 15 at home, 21 and 12 on the road. So kind of unique there. They were actually better on the road. So how do you look at this matchup, Stephen? I mean, you have LA with Paul George and Kawhi. They've never played in the playoffs together. And, you know, Kawhi coming off a championship in Toronto. And then you have the other duo over in Dallas, Donkic and Porzingis, also have not played together in the playoffs. How do you look at this matchup? So um, here is how I look at this matchup. I actually think that this series could easily go – not easily, but I could go six games. I don't see this going seven because the Clippers are really good. But, (laughs) I mean, think about it. The Mavericks are only four games off the pace from the Clippers. I mean, 
that is a, a very impressive in itself, and that just shows how close this series would be. I like Doncic, I like Porzingis, and if you see the really unique statistic here, just off the bat, when you look at the records, is how impressive the Mavericks are away from Dallas. They're twenty-one and twelve. That's one of the best records in the league on the road of the sixteen playoff teams. Um, they're the old. They're Third in the league in away wins, um, right behind Milwaukee, Toronto, and um, the Los Angeles Lakers. So, so they're fourth in the league in um, in away wins. So that just shows us how competitive they are away, and they they still protect the home. They're four games above five hundred at home. I like the Mavericks in this series to win at the very least a game. So that just shows that you know this is not going to be an easy series. Um, the Clippers win, I think, in six, five or six. I want to say six because I respect the Mavericks organization a lot, and I, I like their roster. But what? I, but this is another case of I would like to see Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis start to build a playoff resume, and then the following season maybe get up to that six seed, five seed, and progress to round two. The Mavericks, they are a organization with a championship pedigree. I mean, they won – the finals in 2010, 2011, it was. I don't remember. Um, they lost to the Heat in 06. This is a team in the last 14 years that has been to the finals a few times, and they usually are a competitive playoff team that gets past a round one, or at the very least goes goes deep in a round one. So they have all the building blocks as an organization to go forward. And the reason why I'm spending so much time on the Mavericks talking about them right now is because you already know what the Clippers are bringing to the table. Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, uh, Pat Bev. I mean, the list goes on. The team's unbelievable. Um, it's a no-brainer that you have to pick them to win. But, uh, you know, what I'm talking about right now is how 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 long is the series going to go? And when you're going to look at uh, Doncic and Porzingis, those are two guys that can score the rock. And, and those are two superstar guys. And, you know, they don't get, they don't get talked about as much as uh, Kawhi and Paul George, and, you know, rightfully so. But – I think this series goes six. I think the Clippers win in six games, and I think the Mavericks are able to win another free agent in the offseason to get them to that second round and potentially to the uh, Western Conference Finals. I think the series goes five games max. Uh, I just think this is something that we haven't really talked about yet. Kawhi Leonard on rest is dangerous. That's why he does load management. Now he's going to have, at the bare minimum, at least a month and a half off before this playoff format even starts. If it does, you're telling me that a fully healthy, fully rested Kawhi Leonard is going to go in against the Dallas Mavericks. I might be saying sweep. Uh, this is the, this is Kawhi's MO. This is how he does it. He waits for the playoffs. He rests for the playoffs. And I think he's just sweeps right through the first round. This is how he does it. He's a lot different than he is in the regular season. I think you look at that road record from the Clippers Yes, it's concerning. It's 19 and 13, but why is it that way? Well, it might be because of load management. A lot of the games that Kawhi and Paul George decided to sit were on the road. So that might be why their road record is a little bit less than, than maybe it should be. So I look at the Clippers, and, and by the way, it's still over 500, even though they did load management. I would pick the Clippers to beat the, the Dallas Mavericks in four or five games. I think the Clippers are more complete than the Lakers are. Why? They have more shooting, they're better defensively, and they have more depth. I think this Clippers team is the best team in the NBA. They're going to sweep this Dallas Mavericks team. Any rebuttal to so that, are you CJ? Taking five or in five or four? I'm, I'm taking four. I think this is what Kawhi waits for. I think he waits All for right. playoffs. Okay. Well, we are two games off in the series, and um, I, I think at the very least five, but I think that the Mavericks are good enough to win two games in the series. They're, 40, they're four wins off the, the Clippers, and I have two superstars, but that'll be regardless of even if it's a sweep, those are going to be four great basketball games. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, this is one of the better matchups out there. And now we move on to the 3-6. Denver Nuggets, 43-22 and 22 at the three seed. They are 25-8 and eight at home, 18-14 and 14 on the road. And then the number six seed, Houston Rockets, uh, listed behind the Oklahoma City Thunder, ironically, after they acquired Russell Westbrook. The Rockets are 40-24. and 24. 22 and 10 at home, 18 and 14 on the road. I look at this Houston Rockets team. I have been on them since they lost that series to the Golden State Warriors with Chris Paul. I have been on them and saying they are not clutch. What did they do as a result? 
They go get one of the least clutch guys in the league, Russell Westbrook, one of the guys that doesn't work with anyone well, Russell Westbrook, and they paired him with another guy that's a ball hog and doesn't work with other players well, James Harden. I think it's a, it's a matchup made in hell, and I don't think that the Houston Rockets come out of this series, quite frankly. I think it will be a seven-game series, but when you don't have a center, and I get this analytical basketball you know, ideology coming around into the NBA where you don't need – a six foot four, six foot five center to get you rebounds. I think that's what you need. Basketball's been played the same way for years. I'm not going to trust a 20 game stretch in the regular season as as an example as to how analytical basketball works. I look at the playoffs. I think you need a big center. They got rid of Capella, didn't replace him. They have two guys that don't work together. I look at this Nuggets team, however, you have Jokic with no one guarding him. You have a great surrounding basketball team ahead uh, around them as well. Great coach, no drama. I like this Denver Nuggets team in this playoff series to win in five games. What about you, CJ? So, so you said that or the, you originally said it was going to go seven. Oh, did, sorry. Yeah, that's my bad. Okay. Seven. Games. So you, so you like the Nuggets in seven? Okay. So, yes. Wow, this is a good series. Why? Because the Nuggets are a better functioning basketball team. The the Denver Nuggets play a much smoother and just all around better style of basketball. They play a winning style of basketball. Why are they constantly a top four seed with players you never really talk about other than Nikola Jokic? Because they play great basketball. And here's why the series is good. Because they, the Rockets might have the most prolific scorer in the NBA in the last 10 years in James Harden. The guy's averaging 34.4 right now. And you're not going to stop him. In the playoffs, he's going to pull God only knows how many threes. He's going to make a lot of them. Um, doesn't matter. So here we go. This is why I think the Rockets win in seven. Ooh. I know. But James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Eric Gordon, I like the Rockets to at least get past round one. These guys, regardless of the fact that they're not playing great basketball, they may not have a center. They play a fast offensive style of basketball. Okay. These guys are superstar winners. James Harden and Russell Westbrook did not pair up to lose in round one. They're not going to lose in round one, but the Nuggets are a very good basketball team. They're really good. And the reason why the Nuggets are going to be able to win three games in the series is solely off of one dude, Nikola Jokic. The Rockets have do not have a single center at the moment that can even out like remotely out rebound the the Nuggets. And you know the leading rebounder of the Rockets is Russell Westbrook, eight point eight point oh. He's got eight rebounds a game. That's their leading rebounder, who's a point guard. Um, the thing is, is the reason why I feel like the the I give the edge here to the Rockets is for however many easy layups the Nuggets are going to get in the paint. James Harden goes down the floor and hits a circus three. It is demoralizing. I like the Rockets in the series in seven um, for for a few reasons, and and mainly it's because James Harden and Russell Westbrook did not team up and will not lose round one of the playoffs. Those guys are going to buckle down and get through this. Um, It it might not be a safe bet, but it's a good bet. Um, I'm going to give a lot of credit here to the the Nuggets because they are genuinely a good basketball team, but they don't have anyone near the level of James Harden to score the rock. They don't have anyone near Russell Westbrook that's going to score the rock. Um, and these are two guys that do have a second gear. For as many people that want to bash James Harden for taking God only knows how many shots. For any, for any people who wants to bash Russell Westbrook because he's not that clutch in the playoffs. These guys have a second gear. People like to forget about the first three and a half quarters, and then they bring it down to minute to the last minute of the game. And they're like, yeah, but he's not good in the final minute. Okay, great. But he played three and a half quarters and dropped 40 on you. So, uh, you know, when you pair up Harden and Westbrook in the playoffs, I feel like they're going to feed off each other. They're going to get the crowd going. They're going to score some, they're going to score the rock. It's going to go seven. And I like the, I like Harden and Russ to get that, to get that game seven done. I see what you're saying. I mean, the, the counter argument to that is, you know, Russell Westbrook can score 40 points and then they still lose. So what's the point of scoring yeah, 40 yeah, but points? Russell's gonna, but Russell Westbrook's going to score say, 40 points, and then James Harden's going to score like 35. That They're going to combine for 75 on their own. they still got Eric Gordon. They've got Robert Covington. they got they got a, they got P.J. Tucker. They've got other guys on their team that are going to also be able to score. One of the big problems with this Houston Rockets team, usually in the past, is that James Harden is too gassed. By the time they get to the playoffs, he plays so hard every night. 
Russell Westbrook, when he did that with the Thunder last year, same thing. They play so hard on a nightly basis that by the time they get to the playoffs, they're already gassed. Well, this time there is no break. There is a break between the playoffs and the regular season, so they'll be way fully rested. That's a huge factor when talking about these matchups, but it still won't throw off my prediction. I think the Denver Nuggets win in seven games. But speaking of Russell Westbrook's former team, the Oklahoma City Thunder, they're facing the Utah Jazz in the 4v5 matchup. The Utah Jazz, 41-23 and 23 at the four seed, 21-10 and 10 at home, 20-13 and 13 on the road. Then the Oklahoma City Thunder, the five seed, they're 40-24, and 20-13 and 13 at home, 20-11 and 11 on the road. This is a Thunder team, man. After they traded Russell Westbrook, a lot of people, you know, no hope for them. You know, they're not making the playoffs. They don't have enough star power. Chris Paul is too old. They don't have anything else. Well, they're sitting here at the five seed, better than the team that they traded Westbrook to, about to face the Utah Jazz. The Jazz have the best three-point shooting percentage in the NBA, which a lot of people don't know. I actually would have had the Jazz beating the Rockets in a theoretical playoff series that they had faced because of that reason. But, CJ, when you look at this series, Utah, Oklahoma, Utah with the home court advantage, who wins this series? Uh, I got Utah. I like Utah in six here. Um, they got the star power. I like their home court advantage here. Um, I really like the way Billy Donovan coaches the Oklahoma City Thunder. No disrespect to them, but I think Utah is just a better team. I feel like Oklahoma City is just having a good regular season. They're just in a groove right now playing good regular season basketball. But when it comes to the playoffs, Utah Jazz, championship pedigree organization, um, they, they are – uh, committed to winning. Uh, it's in their DNA. And um, I like I like Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert. list goes on with that team. Um, you know, the thing is, the Thunder do some really good things with the basketball. Um, I've actually enjoyed watching the Thunder play basketball this year. Uh, people wrote them off. And, you know, Russell Westbrook left uh, Oklahoma City. And ironically, uh, his team is above him at the moment in, um, in the standings. I, I, you know, and I feel like this is a big, a big testament to what Chris Paul can do to your organization if he goes in a system that is good. I, you know, I think Chris Paul really screwed up and, and, and left for the Houston Rockets. He, he should have never played alongside James Harden. That's not the type of player that he should be playing with. But regardless, um, he's really helped out Gil- Gilgis Alexander um, uh, with, you know, dishing the rock to him and, and, and making him more of a focal point of the offense. While wow, Chris Paul is there. Uh, I love Steven Adams in the playoffs, but it just, it really comes down to the fact that the Utah Jazz are deeper and they have home court advantage. I, I like this series to go, to go six games. So I will give the credit to Oklahoma City. They will win two games in the series, but the Jazz are going to win in six. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I, I actually agree with you about the six games. I think that the Jazz will win it. The only thing that concerns me, though, and I'm actually bringing this up as a legitimate concern, I mean, you know, Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert might not be getting along right now with with what happened a few weeks ago and Gobert spreading the virus. I mean, do you think that would have any impact on how the team works together? I think that that episode could definitely have an impact. Um, It definitely is going to come down to when they get in the rock room again, whenever that may be. Hopefully it's it's soon, sooner rather than later that everyone can resume sports activities. But when they get in that locker room, they're going to need to really, you know, Rudy Gobert is going to address the team and and it's really going to come down to, you know, am I, as my, as his teammate, am I going to go up to him, give him a hug and give him the benefit of of the doubt, or am I going to resent him for what he did? It really could come down to that moment in the locker room for how their postseason is going to go. Cause I could, I can see if, if things don't smooth over, um, with Rudy Gobert, I could see them dealing him in the off season. Cause that, that could be a very broken relationship, but I think skill wise alone, I think that the, the jazz are good enough to get to round two. Now at that point, I don't think that they go past round two, but um, yeah, that's a really interesting point that you bring up. Like how will the team chemistry be uh, past the, uh, after the, the coronavirus. But when you look at Donovan Mitchell, who's average, who's having a great season, averaging 24, uh, Rudy Gobert is averaging 13 rebounds. You know, this, the stats are there. I mean, they are playing great ball uh, individually and as a team, and I love that home court advantage in Utah. I can't, you know, regardless of coronavirus and regardless of what Rudy Gobert did, I can't sit here and say that the Jazz can lose the series, but I will say that that can be an opening for Oklahoma to push this to seven games, even though I think that this goes six. 
Yeah, I'm with you on literally everything you just said. I mean, there's there's really uh, not much I can add to that. I mean, you know, this is a this is a Jazz team that if they put everything together, they're going to win this series. I also agree with you that they're not going to get out of the next round, but I do think that out of all the teams in this Western Conference, they're really the only team that could challenge the Lakers and Clippers in a series, not necessarily to win it, but because they're so good defensively and because they shoot threes at the best rate in the NBA, I think they could give a Lakers or a Clippers a lot of trouble. I agree with your statement on the fact that the Jazz actually could give uh, those top two teams some trouble. Um, I actually do think that the Rockets could as well. There's something that happens when like bona fide stars play against other bona fide stars, like a Harden and Westbrook versus a LeBron and AD. The reason why I feel like, you know, that when stars play stars, uh, you know, something special happens is because all those support players, all those role players, you know, they get pushed to the wayside in a lot of those games because stars like to prove to other stars, who am I and why? And I agree with your statement on Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, this team, not only are they a great basketball team, just a very good basketball team. People forget that Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert are superstars. They have the stats to that, that they are superstars. Yeah. Now, if they were in more of a marketed area, now the Jazz are a historic team. They are a, you know, they are a, like almost like an original organization, but they're not a Lakers. They're not a Clippers. They're not a New York Knicks. They're not um, in that echelon of, uh, you know, Boston Celtics where it's like, uh, we got to give these guys press. Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, in my opinion, superstars. Those guys are pre- premier players at their position and they're young. So, Rudy Gobert, double-double a game. Donovan Mitchell averaging 24, electric shooting guard. I think he's like the second coming of Dwayne Wade. I agree with your statement that they could definitely challenge the Clippers and the Lakers. Now, I actually think that they could challenge the Lakers better than the Clippers because I like I do Rudy too. Gobert. I think the Clippers are a little yeah. overrated. Well, no, no. I'm saying I think that they could challenge the Lakers because I think that they match up against the Lakers a little bit better. Okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I would say at the guard position for sure that they match up better. And I think Gobert can can neutralize AD defensively. Yeah. So regardless, I agree that they could definitely uh, – I think the two teams outside – just to wrap this up, I think the two teams outside L.A., the L.A. teams, would be the, the Rockets because James Harden and Russell Westbrook, those guys, they definitely don't like LeBron. They definitely don't like Kawhi. They want to, They would. They would want to go in that building and drop God only knows how many points. I'm telling you right now that that would be an electric series if the Rockets could play one of those teams, which I think they will. But anyway, um, I do really like the Jazz in a series against the Los Angeles Lakers. Not so much the Clippers because the thing about the Clippers is they can start Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, and I don't like Mike Conley and Donovan Mitchell. Um, and Bojan, Bojan Bogdanovich up against a Paul George, Kawhi Leonard combo and Patrick Beverly. I don't really like that, but I really like Bojan, um, Donovan Mitchell, and Mike Conley against a whomever the Lakers would start. I think that that would be a really good series, and I think LeBron would have to be on his toes the whole series. So that's a good point that you made. Thank you. I mean, I agree 100%. So who are you taking to come out of the West to face the Milwaukee Bucks? Who am I taking to come out of the West? Wow. Um, with this, you know, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Uh, say that before I start. Um, I like the, the, the Lakers' storyline. I don't think that LeBron James is going to be wearing a Lakers jersey and not be in the finals this year. He's going to flip a switch. I think it'll be Clippers-Lakers in the final, and I think it goes seven games. I think LeBron wins it, channels, his, channels a Kobe Bryant moment in front of everyone. Um, but here's the thing. I don't want anyone to think that I'm actually like counting out the Clippers because the Clippers are so good that they could actually beat the Lakers in six. So I, yeah, I mean, my hunch, so is, true. my hunch is, is <laughs> LA Lakers versus the Bucks, which would be such a great series. Um, but wow. I'd see the Western conference players would be great. Like if LeBron has to play a Utah Right. So if if the Jazz were to win the series and both LA teams win the series, who would um, who would play who? I would say. Let I me think, see. So four, five Clippers. So they would play. It, let's say if Denver wins the series against Houston, 
they would play the and Clippers. And then the Jazz would play the Lakers. Because – Wow. Right. But if the Rockets won, it would be the Lakers versus the Rockets and then the Jazz versus the Clippers. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's All right, so how it would from go. My, in my prediction, just to play this out, I have the Rockets winning. So there would be Rockets, Lakers, great series, Jazz, Clippers. That is great basketball. I need sports to resume immediately. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> we need it back. We need it back. I mean, even if it's in Vegas, right? I mean, would oh, you for sure. That? I don't care if it's in Vegas. I don't care if they, they have the games in Saskatchewan territory, Canada. I, d- I don't care as long as it's done. <laughs> Yeah, we got to get some up there in North North uh, Dakota. We've heard the, as a rumor. I mean, we we got to get anything we can take yeah. here. I'm with you, actually. I I'm taking the Lakers because of that emotional appeal. Uh, you know, again, uh, you know, Rip Kobe Bryant, one of the best players to ever play this game, one of the you know greatest people to ever play the, this game. The, he was such an inspiration to everyone. But when you're a Laker and and you're playing on the same team that that he played on, you're LeBron James. You went to L.A. to become basically the next Kobe. This is what you have to do. You have to win the NBA Finals this year. There's no other way to end it. And I'm with you. Like, I'm not saying I'm counting out the Clippers here, but they are way better than the Clip- than the Lakers are. The Clippers are a much better team than the Lakers are. They're much more complete. Uh, they have better shooting. They, they are uh, – I mean, the Clippers are just a better team. But I just think from that emotional appeal – that motivational, whatever you want to call it, you know, mojo, that Kobe magic is going to fuel the Lakers. I think they will go to the NBA finals. Yeah. Yep. So we will be wrapping up the NBA with our semifinals, conference finals, and finals predictions. Um, At the moment, Jacob and I are pretty much similar in what we have. I think we only have one difference in, in all honesty, which is the Rockets series. Um, after that, um, we will be doing semifinals, as I said, semifinals, conference finals, finals, and we will wrap up the NBA and get into our NHL playoff outlook, which is um, definitely a little bit more tricky because there are a lot of teams that could have made it and a lot of teams that could have fallen out. Um, thank you guys for listening. And as always, you can find us at, on iTunes, Spotify, Twitter, you name it. Uh, have a great day, everyone. All right. Thanks, guys. You can check us out on all those platforms. I am Jacob Brown. Thank you to CJ. You can check out our NHL videos coming out Friday and Sunday. Uh, We will see you next time. Thanks, guys.